Okay, so let me tell you guys the situation with my um, visa. So basically, in short, I gotta be careful because I'm kind of in the hood of <laughs> what's this place? Gaia Kill. So I wasn't able to get the digital nomad visa because what they were asking, which is so stupid to me, is they were asking for a contract, a contract with an employer a company, etc. This is the thing, I don't have a contract with anyone. I'm self-employed, right? I don't have a contract. YouTube doesn't provide a contract. I have an agreement, nothing is signed. Damn, this traffic is loud. Just give you a little idea of where I am. Child. Okay, so I'm back home. It was just too loud out there. And honestly, I'm gonna be honest, walking down that street, I did not feel safe having my phone out. So I, I kept it in my um, bag. So <laughs> a few of the people I've been talking to tell me, oh, you're in the dangerous area. I'm like, what do you mean? But anyway, let's get back to the topic. So yes, they want a contract. And as a YouTuber, someone who makes his money online, I'm self-employed, but I don't have like, um, certain things to r even write myself a contract now because I've actually been looking into that I've been a little bit slow with that but I don't need it it's not really necessary when all you need is like an ABM number so I'm like okay I'm good but they really want this contract thing now I know a lot of you guys are going to point me to a youtuber named Angie who makes content traveling around Ecuador now according to my lawyer and I'm not gonna call my lawyer out, and this is not Angie's fault at all, but um, apparently the Ministry of Ecuador or some part, I'll put the name here, uh, quote by quote what she told me, wasn't happy with someone's decision of letting her have a digital nomad visa because all she did was provide, from my understanding, of course she provided other things, criminal records, etc. But she provided that the website, she showed proof that the website, I guess, was hers. I don't believe she showed any contract saying that she's employed by anyone or self-employed. And if she did, then shine a line on it because I don't believe she mentioned that in her video. I feel like they let her buy because she makes good content on Ecuador. So I personally feel that's why they let her have a digital nomad visa. And I believe she was the first one, right? To get a digital nomad visa. But um, yeah, the rules are is that you need a contract from some type of company or someone that you work for. You need to get it apostilled and then you have to bring it with all your other documents. Again, YouTube doesn't provide that. I'm self-employed. So I feel like they need to update you know, really try to look into what a digital nomad is because a lot of digital nomads don't have contracts. They just have an ABM number, self-employed number, I guess. I don't know what you call it in America, but yeah. So there's nothing like that. And the lawyer didn't give me any other options. I have a refund coming, so that's good. Um, the lawyers were very helpful over there. Um, and yeah, that's the unfortunate situation for me. So now I am going to Chile. Um, I'll be in Chile for one month and then I am going to, a to Australia. And I'm gonna see my grandma spend time with her because her time zone is up and that's why I came to Cuenca real early because I was hoping to get this digital nomad visa sorted and then go back to um, Australia and then come back. But turns out I was wasting my whole time to begin with, which is pretty sad. Yeah, Ecuador definitely fixed that. Um, I'm going to get my LLC soon. So if I want to go to Ecuador, I can do that and get a digital nomad visa there and I can write myself a contract, I guess. Um, but to be honest, I'm over it now. I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to look for better options, you guys. I know a lot of people are going to be like, I know some of y'all will be like, okay, why not this visa, that visa? There's a lot of flexibility and opportunities when it comes to a digital nomad visa. And that's why I wanted that specific visa. So yeah, I'm gonna now go to another country after Australia. I've been in Chile for a month, so I film a lot of content for you guys in Chile. But I'm going to have different options. You know, there's a few options. 
Bali is thinking of getting a digital nomad visa soon. So I definitely am looking into that, setting a home base there, and then coming back to South America to film content and stuff and back and forth. It's kind of perfect because it's between Australia and, you know, I have family in Australia so they can come visit me. Uh, Malaysia is also thinking of getting a digital nomad visa soon and they included in their visa, digital nomad visa that they want content creators. So that's another good thing. So I'm glad there's countries out there, Ecuador, that make it easy because hopefully, hopefully Malaysia knows what they're doing when they do this visa and they don't ask for a stupid contract because YouTube is content creators. IG models, for example, might have a short contract for promotions and stuff like that. YouTubers might have a short contract as well, but majority of the time, they're making good money on YouTube, okay? I'm talking about 10K, 20K, 40K. You know, even myself, I can't speak for every other YouTuber, but I know for me, I have a really good stream of income. So hopefully Malaysia doesn't fall into the same mistake that Ecuador is doing about this whole, we need a contract. Because again, YouTubers don't have contract. YouTube is not like, oh, I hired you, here's a contract. It doesn't work like that. And I just, I don't know, I guess they're not getting with the times because there's not, this isn't just YouTube. There's a lot of other ways you can make money online. Patreon, OnlyFans, um, there's so much. So hopefully Ecuador just opens their ears, open their eyes and realize that not everyone has a con, digital nomads, a lot of digital nomads don't have contracts. Maybe the new storm of digital nomads, since the pandemic, there have been a new storm of digital nomads because employees couldn't have people in their office. So people have, were working at home. See, that's different. My friend, he's, he's always living in Mexico, but he works from Canada. His boss hired him, and when the pandemic hit, he, had to, he couldn't work in the office, so he decided to come to Mexico. So you have those situations and those digital nomads, but the earlier digital nomads, I don't feel a lot of them had contracts, or well, long-term contracts anyway for a year or whatever. So yeah, that's my thing. Hopefully Ecuador, the powers of B or whatever can open their eyes to this and realize that not everyone has a contract. And yeah, that's my story. And hey guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm definitely gonna miss Ecuador. And that, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I do miss Cuenca's weather. At first I hated it, but now I'm like, you know what, it's actually good. I just still prefer heat, but still, I liked it. I just didn't like that high in the mountain, I couldn't breathe all the time, but besides that, it was good. Uh, anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. I made a lot of good friends in Ecuador. It was such an amazing experience, but I guess I'm gonna close that chapter now and travel somewhere else. Anyway, peace guys.